All right, guys, so on today's show, we're going to go over how to make your own gas manifold and run your gas line and how basically it all works um, related to your house out in the country. Um, but before we get started, um, I had some people asking about the electrical inspection. We passed the electrical inspection, which is awesome. There's a couple things that I have to add, uh, nothing major that uh, is going to require him to come back for another rough-in. So rough-in is done. I won't see him until the final, but he did make notes on the things he wanted me to add. And one of those things was right here in the box. Um, there was a ground wire. Uh, right here that was too small he wanted a bigger one so I put a number eight I think he said he wanted at least so I got a number eight up to the ground bar that was one thing um, that he need that he wanted done another thing was uh, another outlet in the garage he wanted four outlets in the garage one for each garage door so I got one over here I'm gonna have one coming down right there I'm gonna add one right here and then there's one over there and he counts those for the four garage doors so that's it for in here and then in the house um, he wanted two outlets added upstairs along this railing and I'll show you show you that I really didn't want to put them along here but it's required so I have to have an outlet along here and an outlet along here because uh, according to the NEC, railing is considered wall. And I have an outlet right there, which I basically put because I wanted to be able to run Christmas lights along here. Uh, but because this is considered wall, um, I need to add two um, the way it works out. So we're gonna be using these floor box kits right here they'll sit flush to the floor I'm not really excited about it but I have to do it so um, luckily I have an outlet um, right below right here that I can just jump off of and add those um, let's see was there anything else that uh, electrical wise um, he was really happy with everything we did said it looked really good um, he was happy with that um, electrical trough that we had and the way um, the wires were supported as soon as they came out. I'll show you that. So one of the biggest things um, with those troughs is the wires have to be supported as soon as they come out of that box. And they are. We got this two by four. The wires are supported right here. I'm not even close to filling up those two inch. Um, they're not even half full. Um, so this worked out really nice. He was real excited about that way that worked so that's it for the electrical so let's jump into the gas manifold system all right i put a union on right here and then this is where my gas manifold will be and i'm going to make one so i got a lot of stuff to put together so all that is going to get to put together to make up my manifold and i'm doing a three quarter inch manifold and pretty much running three-quarter inch uh, pipe everywhere and then uh, I'll reduce it at the if I need to reduce it to half inch I'll do that at whatever appliance it is but most of them um, that I have are going to be three-quarter inch except for the furnaces I think they're half inch supplies so this manifold um, I place it in a vise and that helps me keep all of these in line so for my manifold all mine are gonna go up all my takeoffs are gonna go up except for the end one I'll have one supply coming off the end so the great thing about making your own manifold is yes it's a little more work um, you can kind of customize it to what you need so you could you could mount this thing vertically and have one pipe going that way and then the next one could be going that way or if it's mounted horizontally you can have some going up and some going down in my case they're all going to face up and then I'm just going to take one off the end to supply my boiler so um, basically what I'm doing 
is I'm wrapping these nipples with Teflon tape and then I'm using this seal compound, thread compound um, on top of that. Um, that's how I was taught to do it and I have really good luck with no leaks. Um, typically from my experience um, I don't think I've ever had a leak where I've joined um, fittings um, except the, where I've had leaks in the past is unions and if you look at a union there's like a, a flat really smooth piece and if any kind of sand or anything gets in there um, typically it will scratch it and it doesn't take much for gas to leak so um, just use Teflon tape a thread compound and then just snug these up I have I'm gonna have seven gas supplies so I got three here and then I have three more T's and then this last one there will be a supply going that way and a supply coming off the end which you'll see once I get it done so I'm just gonna keep uh, putting to this putting this together once I get all of the T's on um, I'll put these nipples off the top and then each line will have a, its own shutoff so once we get this done we'll go ahead and mount it on the wall on the end here just got to make sure that's nice and clean when you put it together and then I'll come off the end right here with another one but I don't know how far away the wall from or away from the wall I am so I might have to put a 90 and turn it but go ahead so this is gonna go right there now and then all my gas lines will come off of it So now I need to build, make some brackets. So what I use um, are these clamps that take a 3 8 rod and then these connector plates um, where you can screw them to the wall and then they also take 3 8 rod. So we'll go ahead and start fixing these up and get it mounted. So we've got to figure out how long to make our rods. So. Let's pick that up there, and then that right there. So we're at two inches, so we'll do add a quarter here, and then let's do two and three quarter. Alright, so this, this clamp part, you're going to screw the threaded rod in until it's just under flush. And then take your bracket, it's going to mount to the wall. Screw the other end in there, and then screw it up a little ways, that'll help you get it on there. And then you're just going to take this, slip it on there, and then you're going to back that off.
guys, the manifold is built. Got all my shutoffs on. So now this is all sealed off and it's sealed off there. So what I can do now, the, there's two things I have to do. Um, is one, I need to pressure test it. So I'll uh, <clears throat> make a fitting um, that I can connect on the outside out there and then I'll pressurize it and make sure it holds pressure for a certain amount of time or I can just put pressure on it and use a soapy solution to check all the joints. So one way or the other, I'll get that pressure tested. And then the next thing you really should do, and I think most places require it, is to bond this to the ground bar in your panel. So I got this clamp. Um, I'll lightly scuff this up right here, and then I'll run a number six ground wire over to my box and it'll attach to this panel, that ground bar right there. So that way if lightning strikes the house or is there some kind of electrical surge, um, it protects the gas system. So I'm gonna do those two things and... Uh... All right, so here is my uh, bonding wire. It's a number six and then it's ran all the way back to the ground bar which is grounded outside and um, at the pole. So, um, very important that you ground your gas system. So if there's a lightning strike or any other kind of um, power surge, it protects your gas manifold system. So um, you can see that the reason I came off the wall here is just easier to get all these fittings on. It gives me room to turn my wrenches versus having this tied up against the wall. I mean, right here I have it uh, tied up against the wall, um, but that doesn't matter because I don't have to attach anything to it. Um, but this one, I got that CCST. Um, it's ran over the top and it comes down and then I start with black pipe up there, come down and then I tee off and it comes around and I got another shut off here. All right, I'm gonna show you how to prepare this for a fitting. So this is like a, it's almost like a corrugated pipe in there. So you're gonna go to the fourth indentation. So you got one, which it can be kind of hard. One, two, three, four. And then you're gonna score that rubber coating on there. It's kind of hard to do. I need to do it on the floor. I'm trying to show you guys. So see, one, two, three, and there's four right there. Just peel it off. Like so. All right, so you got this, there's gonna be a few things. You got the nut, which you're gonna slide that on first. Then there's this split um, washer. That's gonna go on. Be careful not to break it. So that goes into that fourth valley, and then you squeeze it back together with your fingers. Then you take the solid stainless steel washer, put that on, and then you have your rubber O-ring, which you have to kind of roll on over all that. So then once that's on there, you're ready to put this on and tighten it. And if that isn't crimped, if that first washer isn't crimped, pushed down far enough, the nut won't go over it, which in my case it's not, so I gotta push that in a little bit more. And then it goes on. So now, 
I'm ready to put this on. And then you're going to hand tighten it and then tighten it with a wrench a quarter to a half a turn is all. And one more thing, in the other end of the fitting there should be a brown um, washer in there. It's like a, a gasket and just ensure that that's in the other piece. I've already looked in there, it's in there. So now uh, I'm ready to put this on. So typically I always put a shut off at whatever the appliances that I'm using and then I have a shut off where the line starts off my manifold and then that's the main shut off which I'll label all these once I get it together and then that one right there um, comes off goes over shoots through the wall and then comes across here attaches to black pipe comes down and hooks into my stove. So we'll check the outside out so you can see what that's like. In my case, um, I have a LP tank and the LP company, um, they like, the one I'm dealing with said they uh, require that they run the gas line from the tank up to the house. So I'm guessing they're gonna use probably poly or probably half inch copper and they'll bring that up to right here where there will be a pressure regulator so they'll attach a pressure regulator here and then there will also be a valve on the tank that they'll install and then this will be the main into the house this is the back side where that uh, pressure regulator will be this is a T I've already pressure tested this um, I just put air on it, but I'll also test it again once there's gas in it. I'll spray it down. It didn't have any leaks. Um, got a little trap here for condensation or whatever else may um, be in there in the gas. Main shutoff comes up, and then these will be for all my other appliances. I like to run home run system. That way I can isolate uh, anything if I need to. And then this one on the end will come off and be for my in-floor heat boiler system. So as you can see, my utility room is starting to take shape. But anyway, that's it for the update today. Stay tuned for the rest of the week. We're gonna have more videos coming, and on one of those videos, I'm gonna do a giveaway because we have hit 75,000 subscribers. So thank you guys very much. And if you're watching this and haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're going to have a lot more coming. It's going to start picking up uh, now um, that we're getting through some of this uh, utilities rough in. And this is going to be fun. We're going to finish this out, and then we're going to jump into the next build series. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.